let me start out with this question, if I can. Uh, you laid out on Monday the uh, framework for the public-private investment partnership. That's, of course, the key initiative toward toxic assets, which are at the heart of the crisis. How quickly can we expect to see results from this effort? I've heard uh, a number of reasonably informed people question whether the sellers, so to speak, are prepared to sell, particularly if they're facing prices below their marks. So how do we measure how well this is doing? And let's just say three months from now, how much actual volume of toxic asset transactions do you expect to see? OK, let me do timing first. Uh, this framework builds on a operational capacity that the FDIC uses for loans. And in a framework, the Fed's evolved for this term asset-backed lending facility for securities. But even though we're building off some existing infrastructure, it's going to take some time for these, the operational infrastructure to be put in place before we actually can start. Uh, so I want to begin with that. Uh, uh, second, um, the effects of this are not going to be judged. You can't measure these solely on the basis of how much activity you get through these funds. The existence of these facilities will help change behavior, just in the way a kind of broader backstop mechanism by a central bank can as well. So you will be able to see effects on liquidity in the markets and on uh, pricing and spreads, um, even if you see uh, gradual take up in terms of relative use of these things. But on the question you raised about the incentives for banks in particular, um, you're right that banks are looking at this and saying, is this going to be economic enough for us? Will the market clear at a rate that's close enough to our marks to make it in, it, uh, compelling for us to sell? But the balance in this is designed to, um, to, in some sense, make it easier for people to raise capital from the markets. And the incentive banks face is, by taking advantage of this facility, they'll be able to show a cleaner institution, easier for the market to judge the risks on the remaining rest of the balance sheet of the institution. And that should make it easier for them to raise capital as a whole. And of course, banks are going to want to take, raise capital from the markets if they can avoid, so they can avoid taking capital from the government. So I think you have to look at the economic incentives a bank faces through that broader prism, not simply on the, what a uh, market with leverage from the government will provide in terms of pricing. But if a bank in the real world is faced with the choice of going ahead with a sale of some toxic assets, triggering further losses, triggering a deficiency of capital, and then having as its only recourse the government, the TARP, do you think that's going to be a deterrence? Well, we're going to provide, you know, the core part of this program, as I said, is the government's going to provide, as a form of insurance, a capacity for banks to take capital from the government to make sure they've got a sufficient cushion in the event of a deeper recession. But what's happening right now in the system is banks, uh, because the market doesn't know how to value the assets on the balance sheet, is uncertain about the scale of losses they face, they're asking banks to hold higher levels of capital than the regulatory requirements uh, require now. And that's partly because of the uncertainty premium there. So they, I believe, have an incentive to uh, clean up those balance sheets. And that'll make it easier, I think. And I think they're going to want to take every advantage again to try, to try to raise capital from the market so they're not in the position of trying to raise it from the government. You know, we want people to be willing to take capital from the government because that's important to, as insurance against a deeper recession. But we also want to get the incentives right so that the government's not taking on all that, all that risk itself. Well, in that same vein. Uh, the administration's budget includes uh, a provision whereby the TARP would be replenished, another $750 billion with a budget cost of $250 billion. If, if Congress were asked to vote on that today, I don't think it would be... Overwhelming support. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it, it wouldn't probably be as close as you'd like. Uh, <laughs> so the question is, how bad is it if you can't replenish the TARP? Uh, Congress gave us uh, substantial resources. Uh, we're going to use those quickly, as effectively as we can, make sure we allocate them that we're going to get the highest return in getting credit markets working again. And, uh, but we're going to make sure that we work with the Congress over time to make sure we can do this on a scale and force that's necessary to help get us through this as quickly as possible. It's going to be extraordinarily difficult. Politics of this here everywhere are very, very hard. That's why crises are so hard to manage in some sense, because uh, it's so hard to make people understand 
that recovery requires a financial system that's working, and that will require government taking risks, providing us support in some sense. But you know, we're just going to have to work at it, make that case. I do think people uh, understand that fundamentally because they're seeing now the consequences across the country of uh, even smaller banks pulling back because they're being more conservative, and businesses are seeing the consequences of that stuff. And so I think that over time, uh, we'll be able to um, make sure there's broad enough support that we can do this on a scale that, that may be necessary. But we have substantial resources now. We're going to move forward to use those as effectively as we can. How much uh, is left in the TARP? Very, very reasonable amounts of money, uh, uh, significant amounts of money. We've you know, committed to put $50 billion aside to help fund this housing program. We've put significant resources aside to help fund these liquidity financing programs for markets, including what we announced on Monday. But we still have substantial resources left to help make sure that um, we can uh, meet other contingencies and fund whatever capital requirements the system needs. One last question from me. Uh, the, uh, the foreclosure mitigation initiative, uh, I hear a lot of skepticism as to the real impact that can have. Uh, I think all of us heard what you said about uh, mortgage rates being at record lows, and there are other ways to measure how you're succeeding on the entire housing problem. But your precise initiative there, what do you expect in terms of actual right. loan modification rates and actual tangible progress? Right. Well, let me just step back for a sec. This housing thing has four really important pieces. One was an effort to make sure that GSE borrowing costs and spreads to treasuries come down. So as a key part of this program, we put substantial additional resources into the GSEs so that they are able to do what they need to do in this market. Remember, they're now about three quarters of the market. So they, their borrowing costs have a huge impact on mortgage spreads. Second is the Fed has a very dramatic program, smaller program alongside the Treasury, to provide direct purchases of agency securities and MBS. That too has helped bringing down spreads. Third piece was a new program to allow uh, people to refinance a conforming mortgage with a higher LTV, loan to value ratio, than is typically required, permitted for GSE eligibility. That will allow three to four million Americans who would otherwise not be able to refinance to take advantage of this very substantial uh, fall in mortgage rates. Now, uh, in addition to that, of course, we laid out this broad loan modification program that will provide pretty significant incentives to investors and servicers to uh, reduce interest rates, principal payments, uh, where it's economically sensible for them to do that. And it'll be hard for people to judge whether we got those incentives right from the beginning. And it, you won't know, I think, what's happening to modifications in that program for probably, realistically, several more weeks, maybe a couple months. Uh, and we can't be certain that we're going to get that balance right. But I think this is the first time we made the incentives uh, powerful enough uh, that we have a shot at a broader program on a standardized basis is going to work across the system. And I think all banks and services will commit uh, to um, participate in this program. And with the uniformity across the GSEs and the FDIC, other programs across the government, this has a uh, pretty good chance of getting traction.